Chapter 5 Night was coming on, and Pinocchio, remembering that he'd eaten nothing all day, began to feel a gnawing in his stomach that was very like a good appetite. But an appetite with boys grows quickly, and in fact, after a few minutes, his appetite had become hunger. And in no time at all, his hunger became ravenous, a hunger that was really difficult to bear. Poor Pinocchio ran quickly to the fireplace, where a saucepan was boiling, and was going to take off the lid to see what was in it. But the saucepan was only painted on the wall. Just think what he felt like. His nose, which was already long, became longer by at least three inches. Then he began to run about the room, searching in the drawers, and in every imaginable place, in hopes of finding a bit of bread. If it were only a bit of dry bread, a crust or a bone left by a dog, a little mouldy pudding of Indian corn, a fish bone, or a cherry stone. In fact, anything that he could gnaw. But he could find nothing, nothing at all, absolutely nothing. And in the meanwhile, his hunger grew and grew, and poor Pinocchio had no other relief than yawning. And his yawns were such enormous ones that sometimes his mouth almost reached his ears. And after he had yawned, he spluttered and felt as if he was going to faint. And then he began to cry bitterly, saying, The talking cricket was right. I did wrong to turn against my papa and to run away from home. Oh, if my papa was here, I should not now be dying of yawning. Oh, what a terrible illness hunger is. Just then, he thought he saw something in the dust heap, something round and white that looked like a hen's egg. It took Pinocchio one moment to leap to it and seize it in his hand. It was indeed an egg. Pinocchio's joy beats description. It can only be imagined. Almost believing it must be a dream, he kept turning the egg over in his hands, feeling it and kissing it. And as he kissed it, he said, and now, how shall I cook it? Shall I make an omelette? No, no, it would be better to cook it in a pannikin. Or would it not be more savoury to fry it in the frying pan? Or shall I simply boil it? No, no, the quickest way of all is to cook it in a pannikin. I am in such a hurry to eat it. Without loss of time, he placed an earthenware pannikin on a brazier full of red-hot embers. Into the pannikin, instead of oil or butter, he poured a little water, and when the water began to smoke, tack, he broke the eggshell over it that the contents might drop in. But instead of the white and the yolk, a gay little chicken popped out. It made Pinocchio a polite curtsy and said to him, A thousand thanks, Master Pinocchio, for saving me the trouble of breaking the shell. Well, goodbye until we meet again. Keep well and give my best regards to everyone. And thus saying, it spread its wings, darted through the open window, and was lost to sight. The poor puppet stood as if he'd been stunned, with his eyes fixed, his mouth open, and the eggshell in his hand. Recovering, however, from his first stupefaction, he began to cry and scream, and to stamp his feet on the floor in sheer despair. And amidst his sobs, he said, Ah, how right the talking cricket was! If I'd not run away from home, and if my papa was here, I shouldn't now be dying of hunger. Oh, what a dreadful illness hunger is! And as his inside was crying out for food more than ever, and he didn't know how to quiet it, he thought he would leave the house and explore the neighbourhood, in the hope of finding some charitable person who would give him a piece of bread. <laughs>